Hi there, you're very welcome to our student spotlight. Today we're speaking to Rachel Hines, who is a fourth year student in the Bachelor of Education degree in Vinnies University. It's a very popular degree, Rachel, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is quite popular now, I must say. Why do you think that is? Um, I suppose it's probably, well, with Maynooth in particular, just the fact that it's such a small course but that we're also located on a university campus. I feel as though, well, from to the best of my knowledge anyway, we're the only um, teaching college that's actually on a university campus. So that's quite an appeal, I feel. Um, and I suppose just it's a really like enjoyable job. Do you know, um, there's a lot of kind of good qualities that go along with it. So I suppose maybe that's why people are more interested in in doing that. <laughs> yeah, I guess, well, just to say DCU are, have clearly moved into, into the area as well, but... Um, so you are in a small group. How many students started with you in first year? You can cast your mind back. Um, <laughs> in first year, I think there might have been roughly 60, maybe a, a few more than 60. Um, yeah, about that, though. Benchmark. <laughs> and when you were choosing your degree in Maynooth um, and ed primary education, did you look at the other colleges? I think you're from Maynooth itself, are you? Yeah, I am from Maynooth, so um, that just kind of worked out nicely for me, to be honest. I was considering uh, Mary Immaculate College in Limerick as well. I went down to their open day and I quite liked the campus and stuff. Um, and then I also went out to St. Pat's campus um, out in DCU as well and to Merino. So I kind of just did the rounds and I just felt that Maynooth, after judging them all up at the end, I felt like that Maynooth was probably the best for me in terms of location I suppose number one but just the college itself I got the best kind of feeling from that so yeah okay. it all just worked out in the end then thankfully. <laughs> so why did primary school teaching come on your radar how long had you been considering that? Um, I've always wanted to be a primary school teacher I feel like I had a really really positive experience in primary school um, so I just kind of went with that then and my mind never really changed I never really considered anything else either which was probably a bad idea at the time looking back now but um yeah I just always wanted to be a teacher and thankfully it's all worked out for me um and I'm enjoying the course and stuff too like it's all going how I thought it would so yeah really happy because that's a, a, a common thing is for people to say I always wanted to do it you know when I speak to, to yeah. students at higher options or other events and um, you know I always wanted to be a primary school teacher and I sometimes wonder if they really know exactly what does it involve. So does it compare? I mean, is it as you thought it would be as a job? Because you're in your placement um, here now. Yes, yes, I'm on placement at the moment. Um, this is my final placement too. So I've had a, a good bit of experience now, both in college and also in schools. Um, it is a lot busier than what I thought in terms of like there's planning involved. There's actually you have to think about the kids and what they know and what they need to know. It's not, I suppose, like, because everyone's had experience with teaching, they might think, like, oh, well, I, I, could, no, I saw a teacher do it, so I can do it. But there's a lot more to it than just standing up in front of a class and teaching. Do you know, you need to kind of make sure that the kids are all on the same page. You know, there's going to be different abilities, different needs, um, just making sure that they're all met and that the kids are getting the most out of what you're giving them. So how do you prepare? What, what does it involve before you go into your classroom every day? Um, how much mm -hmm. preparation do you have to do just the day before or um yeah so each lesson would be planned out so we'd have a rough timetable of the day um set for each week and then you just plan each lesson um kind of what resources you might need have it all kind of ready to go the night before really um maybe a little bit of photocopying in the morning before school so like getting in early would probably be the handiest thing um, but that's kind of it like once it takes a bit of getting used to but once you get to know the class and get to know what works best for you it's it's nice then yeah you kind of get into the swing of things. So are you on your own in the classroom now as a fourth year you know student in the university a fourth year student? Yeah yeah so the class teacher they don't have to be in the room they can sit down the back if they like or they can go and do whatever kind of maybe other jobs that might be needed around the school or to cover another class things like that but yeah we'd be on our own now teaching for the full day. So in first year then, did you do any placement in first year or how, how does that evolve over the course of the degree? Yeah, so um, we do placement every year. So in first year, it starts off, um, you find the school yourself. So 
you tend to kind of go back to your old primary school because they have an idea of who you are you know they them it's kind of handy um and you do every monday in a senior infants class just observing so like the teacher might need help with art or you know like little things like that mm -hmm. and you just kind of get to know the kids get to know the class get to a feel for like school as a teacher rather than a student um and then after christmas so in january then we went in to that same class um, and we did three weeks teaching there, but we only did two or three lessons a day. So it was just kind of eased in that way. Um, and you'd already known the class, like they had an idea of who you were and stuff. So that was nice. And then second year, we had two placements. So we had the first one in like October, November time. And that was a paired placement. So we were paired up with another student in the same year as us. And we both taught. So you're still teaching three lessons a day, but it's like I would teach three and then my partner would teach three rather than the class teacher. And that was for three weeks as well. That was in first or second class. And then in January of second year, we went in, that was our first time teaching the full day on our own. So I had third class for that. It was either third or fourth class that we got. Um, and yeah, from then, then you're teaching on your own. So third year, fifth and sixth class in November, and then back to infants in January. And then fourth year, you have your 10 week block. So for the 10 weeks, we do four weeks of resource or special educational needs teaching, and then two weeks of school experience. So like subbing if a teacher is absent or maybe, you know, organizing different things for like school plays and stuff this time of year, Christmas, it can be a bit hectic. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we come back after January and we get a class from either first to sixth and we teach them for the day. Okay, so you've got the full span of all of the, the class years yeah. in, the, in the full. Um, yeah, it's your, busy, but it's nice. Good experience as well. And have you spent the entire placement experience in your one school or did you have to change schools? Yeah, so we don't go back to the same school twice. So um, either we source the placement ourselves or Freble will source it for us. It depends on the placement and um location and stuff like that but um yeah no we wouldn't go back to the same school twice so it's really good as well you get a huge range of experience in loads of different classroom settings as well as schools age groups it's excellent yeah yeah so to um matriculate or to 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 be able to come onto the degree in the first place you need to have irish and that's a big concern yeah. for i know for a lot of students who are coming in uh, with the leaving cert if uh, it's not mm -hmm. a particular strength so how, how important is having Irish as, as part of the degree? Um, well, the, at the moment, the requirement is a H4 in Irish. So you need to have higher level um, to like the fourth standard, which is 60% uh, and above, I believe. So once you have that, once you get even just the 60%, you're more than capable for the course. Um, the, they're very good at kind of, we have two separate like um, lectures. One would focus on your improvement your personal improvement of Irish and the other then focuses on how you can teach Irish to children so it's you're getting the two kind of sides of it and it's great as well because we start at infants so even if your Irish isn't sixth class ready you're not going to be there until third year anyway and you're going to keep developing and learning yourself and you know so it's nice in that way you're not just thrown straight into the deep end you really do build it up which is nice and in first and second year as well there's an upskilling option so um, you can pick Irish, pick to do Irish for an extra hour um, every week. You know, if you feel like you need that extra support, it's there for you. Okay. Um, so no, I feel like once you get that, the really, the supports are are really effective, and they're they're they, they're there to help you. You know, they want to make sure that you're doing your best. So yeah, it's all good. <laughs> are there any subjects in the Leaving Cert that you think have really stood to you from the point of view of the course, apart from Irish, clearly? Um, I'm not sure really because I feel as though with primary teaching you're doing a bit of everything so there's mm -hmm. geography history science maths English Irish SPHE so because you're not doing loads of one thing mm -hmm. I suppose anything you do at Leave Insert will will help you to a degree yeah so there's nothing that really stands out but um, they all do come into play yeah <laughs> yeah so it, over the course of a day in your placement, are you how many subjects are you teaching? Is it is it the entire curriculum, you know, to a certain extent? It, yeah, it depends on the age group. So like the younger kids wouldn't be able to sit for as long as the older kids. Um, 
So, and obviously they have a shorter day then as well, the younger ones do. And I suppose at the moment with COVID, like the hand washing, sanitizing and stuff, that all takes into school time as well. But I suppose maybe roughly five or six lessons a day, just to try and get through maybe two, two and two, you know, before lunch, before break, between break and lunch, and then at the end of the day, mm -hmm. um, that would be probably the usual setup. But then again, some lessons might go a bit longer, some might be a bit shorter. So um, it just depends once you get to know the class um, and the routines of the school, it kind of falls into place a bit easier, but probably roughly that, yeah, five or six. Are there any, uh, but like picking your favorite child, but are there any particular year groups that you are particularly enjoyed uh, interacting with? I don't with? know. Yeah, I, I really, I don't know. I find that I go into a class and I'm like, yeah, that's a really nice class. Love that. And then I'll leave and I'll go into the next one and be like, yeah, that's a really nice class. <laughs> Love that. So it really just depends. I, yeah, I, I don't even know if I could pick one. It changes every day. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. No. I really wouldn't pick one, which is good, I suppose. <laughs> it's a very diplomatic answer indeed. Um, yeah. And just in terms of personal characteristics, you know, do you think that there are certain types of people or? You know? um, I don't know, because each, each teacher is different. Mm. So I, I, like, yeah, OK, you could say maybe be more outgoing, but sure, once you get into the swing of things, like you'll all you'll develop all those skills anyway if they're not personal attributes you have you will develop them um and again there's loads of supports there from the the department that will help with that too like in terms of lectures and stuff um it's all taught through by them beforehand they understand that people are going to be different and some people will be fine with this and struggle with this so I don't even know if there's any set ones I feel like anyone is cut out to be a teacher to be honest if you really want to do it and you have that kind of passion yeah go for it in ty did you or maybe did you do ty in school yes yeah i did uh, was that was the placement in yeah. the school a part of that or yeah i actually did work experience in two primary schools in maynooth and then i also did work experience um in the freville department as well so mm -hmm. i'd gotten a bit of a <laughs> a bit of a taster for it beforehand yeah yeah <laughs> that, that will have helped i'm sure just to give you the the full experience <laughs> Um, yeah yeah getting to know the other people and stuff what interests are I mean it's, it's a busy time isn't it in terms of your college uh, the amount of work that you have on the course and I as I understand it it's pretty much a yeah. nine to five day that you would have when you're when you're in, in campus uh, in lectures yeah. um how do you find time for you know the lighter side of college life if if you will yeah um I suppose it's just about finding the routine that works for you so I played basketball as growing up so I joined the basketball club then as part of the university and I played with them for first and second year um of college so like that, that kind of was nice for me to be honest because I knew that every Monday I'd have training for an hour and a half and every Wednesday I'd have training for an hour and a half do you know like it was kind of that extra bit of something to do I knew it was going to come each week and then if there was matches and stuff as well the department were very like understanding if I had to miss lectures do you know that kind of way it was never a, a fear so it was perfect in that sense and then I suppose as well it's just about knowing that right I have an assignment due next week so if I work on it now then I can go out and enjoy myself and not feel guilty for it it's just about finding that kind of self-discipline I suppose because it's not like your homework is due tomorrow anymore. It's, you know, an assignment for a month or two's time. But if you leave it till the last minute, <laughs> it's kind of like panic station. So, yeah, you have to plan. So moving from, yeah. uh, from second level to third level, did you find that that was quite um, acute in terms of the difference between the, the learning? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I find, if I, well, looking back, I kind of can tell that like first year, I wasn't probably fully myself. Not that I struggled in university. It's just when I think back, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I was fully like settled until maybe second year. It took that time just to really find like what I want to do and, and you know how I'm going to do everything that I want to do and make sure I'm still keeping well with friends, but also with college and that kind of balance, I suppose, just to find that. It just takes a bit of trial and error, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I did. I found the transition okay at the time, but looking back, probably I can see, oh, actually, maybe I wasn't fully there when I thought I might have been at the time. Yeah. But it was fine. Yeah. But as you say, there are supports there for, for students. Yeah, loads of supports. Yeah, definitely. 
so your basketball and uh, what other interests do you have in terms of clubs and societies? So I was also part of the soccer club then first year as well. And then Kulak Nagoya as well. Um, that's the Irish Society. I was part of that. I actually still am part of that from first to fourth year. And then the Freble Society as well. I was joined um, with that too. So yeah, <laughs> kept what busy. Kind, what kind of events would the Freble or, or even the Kulaks get, get involved in? So um, the Freble Society would work a lot with um, like the Freble Hope Foundation. So um, that's basically where money would be raised for the student teachers to go out and um, teach in Kolkata or like, you know, like help them out there in India. So there'd be fun, fundraisers for that, um, like the cabaret for Kolkata, that would be on. Um, then there's like quiz nights and things like that too. Uh, the Freble Ball, for example, at the end of the year, you know, just to get together and kind of say, well done. Um, mm-hmm. Then for Kulak Nguelga, it's kind of the similar stuff as well, like fundraisers, just little like, get togethers, like Te Yoga's play. So every Thursday you'd go and have a chat and a cup of tea, ask Gwelga, just practice and it's no judgment, just nice and easy going. <laughs> in Shomer Nguelga, is it? Yeah, Shomer Nguelga in the arts block, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, so just coming towards the end, what are your next plans, do you think? I mean, you have the next number of months, um, you have continuous assessment. Is continuous assessment mostly what your work involves in terms of academic essays? And um, it's, it would usually be, yeah, like, so it's more so just like assignments that would be worth 100% of the grade or um, exams at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be the majority of it now. This year is probably the only year that I can think of that we've had more continuous assessment. Um, I don't know if that's usually the case or if it's just because of COVID that they've decided that this year, but um, this would be the main, I think the, the main time we've had continuous assessment. So yeah, just kind of finishing off the last few bits of assignments and stuff for um, the end of the year, once we finish placement in January, that'll be the main kind of focus in the dissertation then as well. We have to write a dissertation as part of the degree too. So getting all that together <laughs> what, what will be the focus yeah. of your dissertation have you decided yeah I am I'm focusing on trying to foster inclusion through the introduction of Irish sign language in the primary classroom that's great yeah so yeah. hopefully it all goes well <laughs> so is a Gale school possibly on the on the cards for you in the future do you think yeah so I've worked I've done placement um in two Gale schools I did my first placement in a Gale school because I went to um, a Gwale school for primary school mm-hmm. and then I also did my second or my sixth class placement in a Gwale school as well so yeah hopefully I will definitely wouldn't say no to a Gwale school anyway yeah very good um <laughs> and do you have any um any words of advice for a potential um Maynooth Freble student or um, someone considering Maynooth yeah I suppose it can be a bit daunting just um in terms of the demand I guess so I suppose what I kind of would say what I've said to myself is just like try your best it'll all work out um like what's for you won't pass you in that kind of sense and in terms of studying for the leaving cert and stuff like it'll come and it'll go like it's not the only year the leaving cert is on it'll happen again next year all you can do is just what you can do you know there's no point in putting this unnecessary pressure on yourself or worrying about something you can't change do you know like you're going to do it and it'll be over and whatever happens happens and yeah yeah and it's also worth mentioning that there are alternative routes into primary school Definitely. And, and some students will yeah, take yeah. this graduate course which is you know as competitive as the undergraduate yeah, that's highly popular this year I know like a few of my friends who have done arts in Maynooth and are, we're trying to get onto the the postgrads then this year or next year and stuff so it's yeah. definitely an option I know loads of people have gone down that route as well yeah Well, lovely. Rachel, thanks very much and very nice to talk to you today. Thank you. You too.